you got nodes? What kind of nodes? Are they red nodes? Ertima nodes? Mm. Hello, it's Ryan here again with another overview video in internal medicine algorithms and mnemonics. I greet you in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's get stuck into today's video as always a healthy clinical case. Alrighty, so got a 27 year old man, youngster, presents for evaluation of skin lesions over here. On examination, he has deep seated painful nodules and plaques on his lower extremities as depicted. Oh man, all of the following are diseases classically associated with the skin finding except is it A, drug exposure, B, inflammatory bowel disease, C, lung adenocarcinoma, D, mycobacterial infection, or E, sarcoidosis. No. So first up guys, what really is erythematidosum? What is it? Well, it is characterized by non suppurative so you don't have any pus in here. Non suppressive, painful, palpable, erythematous, nodular lesions in the skin. And the reason you have this is because of a delayed hypersensitivity reaction in the dermis and subcutaneous fat. It's usually associated with fever and arthralgia, its cousins, and it's common in the shins. Now, these nodules may be between 2 and 6 centimeters in diameter. They occur in crops over about two weeks and then resolve slowly over a few months, leaving a bruise in the skin. Now, three important rules about erythematidosum the unspoken rules, the anthracene button. Number one, it never ulcerates. Number two, it may be recurrent. Number three, it's very common among adult females. Here are some beautiful images courtesy of short cases in clinical medicine depicting multiple erythematidosum. Mm -hmm. And uh, here is an example of a single erythematidosum lesion in the foot. And here, once again, multiple, right? So they are painful, erythematous, palpable nodules and plaques. If you have to look at erythematidosum in a skin biopsy under the microscope, what does it look like? What are the histological Claims to fame of erythematidosum. Well, it's described as what we call a paniculitis. A paniculitis. Do you like it? No, I don't. It's a paniculitis. It causes an inflammatory reaction in the fat. And there's also infiltration of lymphocytes, histiocytes, and our beloved multinucleated giant cells and eosinophils. There's also immune complex deposition in the dermal vessels. And the classical histological hallmark is what we call Mishker's granuloma. Mishker. Right. What is the important history you want to elicit from a patient who presents clinically with erythematidosum? History of drugs, 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 and more drugs. Are you taking sulfonon, sulfonamides like trimet sulfa, otherwise termed Bactrim, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole? Are you taking estrogen-containing oral contraceptive pills, salicylates, barbiturates, sulfonylureas? You got that metformin happening there. Iodides. Is there a history of fever or sore throat which alludes to streptococcal tonsillitis? Are there infections that you suspect like tuberculosis, leprosy, histoplasmosis, which are other granulomatous kind of infections if you like? Does the patient have arthritis or arthralgia or any of the other features of sarcoidosis? What are the other features of sarcoidosis? Mm -hmm. The skin involvement, arthritis, reticular and epithelial involvement with hepatosplenomegaly, ophthalmological involvement with uh, uh, uveitis, are there any other distal flangeal bony cysts or any other immunological features, right? Sarcoidosis also causes neurological involvement with multiple cranial nerve palsies, aseptic meningitis, the list goes on. GIT symptoms, does the patient have these? Mm -hmm. Diarrhea, dysentery, abdominal pain, which can be due to inflammatory bowel disease. Now, what are important examination findings in the patient with erythema nodosum? Well, look at the throat to check for those inflamed, red, hot, tender tonsils, lymph nodes, Right, which alludes to, and the differential for that can be sarcoidosis, TB, lymphoma, fungal infections, all of which we know can cause erythema, nodosum. Look at that liver and that spleen. Feel that liver and the spleen. Is there hepatomegaly? Is there splenomegaly? Which points to sarcoidosis and lymphoma as causes of the erythema, nodosum. Skin changes. Right? Look at that nose. We want to check if there's any lupus perneo there, which speaks to sarcoidosis. Is there an anesthetic patch or an erythematous or nodular lesion, which happens in leprosy? And we will be covering leprosy in another video. Uh, are there any ulcerations in the mouth or genitalia, which points to Bechet syndrome and the evidence of rheumatic fever? Righto, what are the causes of erythema nodosum? I'm glad you asked. One is sarcoidosis, which is usually acute. All right, watch out for Lofgren syndrome, which is a triad of peripheral arthritis together with erythema nodosum and bihyal adenopathy. It's so specific for sarcoidosis, you don't even need to do a biopsy. How about that? Septococcal beta hemolytic infection in the throat, primary pulmonary tuberculosis, drugs, inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, fungal infections like histoplasmosis and coccidiodomycosis. Coccidiodomycosis. That's quite a mouthful. 
The list goes on. Protozoal causes like toxoplasmosis, leprosy, especially uh, what we call erythema denosum, leprosum. Mm -hmm. Making a poem there. Idiopathic and up to 50%, and others include brucellosis, rickettsial infections, mycoplasma and viral infections, pregnancy lymphoma, cash crash disease, which is called which is called Bartonella hensale, right? And SLE, which is systemic lupus erythematosus. Alrighty, so we got a patient, you got the history, you got the exam findings of the demonodosum, you examine him. What are the investigations do you want to do? Hmm? Well, full blood count is a good idea, together with an erythrocyte sedimentation rate and a peripheral smear. Why, pray tell, you want to do these? Because of the diff, leukocytosis may speak to strep infection, a high ESR and TB. Also, it's prudent to look for uh, evidence of a uh, strep infection, so you do your antitripilizing O titer, a throat swab, send it off for caution sensitivity, blood for caution sensitivity, which may show strep infection. Why do you want to do a chest x ray? Hmm, to look for TB and sarcoidosis. Both glenulomatous issues. You're going to do a MANTU test in the sputum for gene expert and acid fast bacilli looking for TB. It's prudent to do a lymph node biopsy if you've got those peripheral lymph nodes that you can access and biopsy. Send it off for histopathology, send it off for your uh, TB culture, and there be hunting for sarcoidosis, lymphoma, and TB. Uh, evidence of inflammatory bowel disease if the patient presents with dysentery or diarrhea or also uh, bowel habit, abdominal pain, etc. Then you want to go through with your barium enema, double contrast, barium follow through, SIGI, or a colloid or colonoscopy. Other investigations as per what you think may be the cause. How do you want to treat erythema nodosum? Well, you simply address and treat the primary cause, like penicillin, if step infection, and so forth. Generally, erythema nodosum is a skin lesion of panniculitis, which is self-limiting and may resolve in some three to six weeks. Other treatments you want to consider is rest, non-steroidals, in severe cases, corticosteroid can be given empirically a short course of potassium iodide. Ayo! Died. 400 to 900 milligrams daily may be helpful. Now we have this other skin lesion called erythema induratum, which is commonly, commonly mistaken for erythema nodosum. So this table quickly tells us the differences between these two. So it ha in terms of duration, erythema nodosum is short, but induratum is long. This uh, The site, sorry, of erythema nodosum is in the shin, but in induratum is the calf. Uh, erythema nodosum, uh, we find the lesions occur simultaneously. Whereas in geratum, it occurs usually serially in crops. Uh, erythema nodosum never ulcerates, but in geratum does. Pain is much more severe with nodosum than in geratum. Scarring is present with in geratum, but not with the nodosum. Uh, causes of erythema nodosum are multiple, but in geratum is mainly TB, 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 and more TB. Both of them cause a panniculitis, histologically speaking, but erythema nodosum causes septal uh, uh, flavor, whereas in geratum causes lobular flavor. <laughs> Yummy. Okay, so here we have examples of erythema induratum, and here we have erythema ab igne. Ab igne. If you look closely to this, it may actually resemble levator reticularis with our mesh like reticulum framework. But erythema ab igne happens commonly in people who sit in front of fires to keep themselves warm or before heaters, especially in the cold, and you have this kind of skin lesion that happens thereafter. Back to our clinical case, guys. So we had a youngster who presented with uh, skin lesions described as deep-seated painful nodules and plaques on his lower extremities. This, my friend, is erythema nodosum. All of the following are associated with the skin finding except thum -da -da -dum, lung adenocarcinoma. So erythema nodosum has several associated disease etiologies. But lung cancer, lung cancer is not classically associated with erythema nodosum. Uh -huh. Okay, beloved, I just want to share some encouragement with you from Scripture. Today we're talking about perseverance. Paul, in his letter to the uh, church in Philippi, says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, Forgetting the things that are behind, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There is a perpetual active pursuit of godliness and holiness that should be inherent in all of us. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 3 to 5 says, We also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces what? Perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Amen. These are my references, guys. Today was Edithema Nadosum. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you again with another overview video. This is Dr. Ryan signing off. God bless you and your family.